there. Welcome to Banana World fans began whining. The women. The hosts contended with one another constantly and put a finger in front of me and hollered, I'd have accomplished more for casualties than you at any point, Will. Then, at that point, I told her nearly nothing about decision-making that I couldn't rehash. Then, at that point, Either provide me with the admiration of watching me while I'm doing my thing, or don't come. Perhaps I need to play it again. All things considered, it doesn't mean you what's the significance here. Turn on the TV, young lady. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm leaving you all. Presently, we're going to We Will Show All Time. Young lady, kindly hush up. Kindly quit talking at present. You know what's awful? Terrible. At the point when the leader of the U.S. prepares individuals to give a thumping to individuals. No, bid farewell. This is the point at which they cut it, acquire new abilities or even cut the show. A show is going all out at the view as Whoopi Goldberg winds up targeted by her co-host. Supposedly, her problematic moves and touchy comments are being blamed for pummeling the brakes on the show. The word on the road is that people who really love the show aren't precisely excited, and their grievances may very well be the purpose for this supposed startling delay in the activity. So what precisely is happening? It seems the once enchanting kinship and lively chat among the hosts have developed into something considerably more evil. A few faithful fans who couldn't escape the show's unfiltered sentiments and engaging disagreements couldn't resist the opportunity to see the change in tone. As a matter of fact, we should discuss the hazardous confrontation that had everybody stuck to their screens. Whoopi Goldberg, the prevailing sovereign of The View, ended up ensnared in a heated spat with, as a matter of fact, her co-hosts. The objective, the down-home music sensation Miranda Lambert, and her blazing position against over-enthusiastic concert attendees Whoopi horned in with her co has satisfaction be hair. Sarah Haynes, Bright Hostin, and Alyssa Farah Griffin analyzed Miranda's callout of fans who really thought about snapping pictures during her Las Vegas residency show on July 15. The radiant, with her unashamed sincerity, thought for even a moment to remain against the Bluebird vocalist protest, saying the costly tickets in the celebrity segment that they were in were $757. I will take however many selfies I need. Be that as it may, this ignited a red-hot trade with Whoopi, who wasn't going to allow it to go unnoticed in her exemplary style. The Oscar-winning star answered, Guess what? Remain at home on the off chance that you will burn through $750 to come to my show, provide me with the admiration of watching me while I do my thing, or don't come. Whoopi wasn't beating around the bush, and strains took off more than ever. However, that wasn't the excellent finale of this scene. Gracious, no. As flashes flew, Whoopi concluded she'd had enough and emphatically stomped off her seat. Walking towards the first column of the studio crowd with the rage of a diva disdained, she said, Turn on the TV, young lady. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm leaving you all. Be that as it may, the show didn't stop there. Enter Jason Aldean, one more bluegrass music sensation whose questionable verses in his new tune attempt that in a modest community sparked a firestorm of reaction in a fight over modest community values versus huge city viewpoint. Aldine's disruptive remarks hit a nerve with fans and enemies alike. The studio appeared to change into a landmark of suppositions, with the hosts saving no words in their wild trades. Goldberg attacked the tune substance, commenting, You simply need to understand that when you make it about people of color matter, individuals sort of say, Indeed, would you say you are discussing individuals of color? What are you referring to? Here in the organization of her co-haves, Satisfaction, Behair, and Bright Hostin? Goldberg's feelings were repeated emphatically. The threesome analyzed the melody's verses, investigated its symbolism, and made sure to label it lamentable and irritating. Their sincere scrutiny resonated through the diversion scene, starting a fierce blaze of responses from fans who felt that the hosts were being crazy with their remarks. In any case, 
This isn't the first occasion when Whoopi's words on The View nearly caused her problems. Whoopi's name is rapidly becoming inseparable from offending visitors. Murmurs of behind-the-scenes tumult moved unofficially, proposing that the two driving women traded something other than warmed words. Some say the air was thick with exclamations as they obviously set free their disappointment before Piro decisively stomped off. An incredible expert direct, couldn't you say? The next year, in a detailed story talk with Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live, Goldberg didn't precisely dispel the idea of unprofessionalism with a shrug that, for all intents and purposes, shouted whatever. She coolly referenced that she hadn't tried to address Piro. I've not addressed Janine. There's not a great explanation for it. Also, assuming there is something smart that she needs to bring to the show, indeed, Whoopi appeared to be more keen on including her check zeros than on expressing a desire for peace. It's a wonder the studio's level of theatrics didn't stir things up around town. Anyway, Whoopi has not only been impolite to visitors but also to her kindred companions. In an arresting conflict of legislative issues and daytime diversion, the display that is The View hit a breaking point during a discussion over Amy Coney Barrett's potential high court designation. As flashes flew and feelings conflicted, one couldn't resist the opportunity to see the not exactly effortless treatment of the circumstances and the civility of the show's consistently directing mediator, Whoopi Goldberg, amidst the energetic verbal fight. Meghan McCain became the overwhelming focus with an enthusiastic outburst, throwing allegations at leftists and wildly protecting appointed authority Brett Kavanaugh. Notwithstanding, it was when co-author Sarah Haynes endeavored to contribute her point of view that things took a deserving turn. Whoopi Goldberg, shining in her job as the mediator, ventured into the fight with an unreasonable order that might have suppressed an uproar. All right, everyone, stop. We're going. We'll be back. Her words didn't simply convey authority. They dribbled with the sort of loftiness that one could hold for uncontrollable kids. Maybe she alone had the heavenly insight to quiet the bedlam of feelings, while the other co-has were consigned to simple foundation clamor. Strangely, it's quite significant that while the discussion might have drifted into an awkward area, the energetic chit-chat and open articulation of suppositions definitively make the view an attractive fascination for its fan base. In this present reality, where political conversations frequently pussyfoot around delicate subjects, the women of the show have gained notoriety for their strength. To be sure, it's this very readiness to dig into the prickly shrubberies of political talk that keeps crowds tuned in, regardless of whether it at times brings about verbal firecrackers. Furthermore, the equivalent Whoopi, who has been directing the heated discussions, has additionally offered a few questionable expressions on air in 2022. Whoopi had the boldness to drop some significantly disputable remarks about the Holocaust, that unbelievably delicate, verifiable misfortune that actually torments us. Whoopi didn't simply mix the pot. She, for all intents and purposes, lit it ablaze. She affirmed that the Holocaust, which unfortunately killed in excess of 6 million Jewish individuals, was not about race. It's about man's cruelty to man. We should simply say that her words didn't go over excessively well. The murmurs of Whoopi's bold remarks spread quickly, unofficially, leaving jaws dropping and people talking. She didn't simply sneak around the edge of the discussion. She dove heedlessly into the turbulent waters of verifiable responsiveness and worked up a tempest that could take ages to settle. The daringness to make light of the sheer loathsomeness and torment that incalculable families endured stripped it down to a straightforward expression that scarcely starts to expose the tragic misfortune. Whoopi's words resembled a lit match tossed into a liability, igniting shock and suspicion from each side of the globe. The people who heard her words couldn't trust their ears. Had she simply minimized one of the most obscure times of mankind's set of experiences in a simple sentence? The boldness, all things considered? Be that as it may, pause, the story doesn't end there. The aftermath of Whoopi's hostile comments was absolutely dangerous. Pundits and antiquarians alike rushed to denounce her words, highlighting the obtuseness and obliviousness that they conveyed. 
Also, a BC News president, Kim Godwin, wasn't having any of it. She quickly dove in and dropped the stunner. As of now, I'm suspending Whoopi Goldberg for a long time for her off-base and frightful remarks. While Whoopi has apologized, I've requested that she invest some time to reflect and find out about the effect of her remarks. The whole ABC News Association remains in fortitude with our Jewish partners, companions, family, and networks. In the meantime, fans are currently faulting Whoopi for annihilating the show and supposedly getting it dropped. Whoopi has forever been a liability. She flaps her gums before she has pondered the results of her words. With respect to Aldine's, attempt this in a modest community. What dubious verses. There isn't anything dubious about the verses of that melody. To any individual who lives in a modest community, it's impeccably considered normal sense. One fan commented. Another fan added, It's no time like the present. She is considered responsible for what she says, very much like Evie, 